Let's the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Time for us to head straight to a second conversation. Uh, we look at the affirmative action for women and the court order. Now, since Wednesday's judgment by the Federal High Court in Abuja ordering the government to comply with the 35% affirmative action for women, which allows women to occupy 35% of all appointment, uh, there's been reaction from women leaders across the country. They have called on the federal government to, without delay, obey the court ruling by implementing the affirmative action, now delivering the judgment. Justice Donatus Okorowa said the federal government had the obligation to implement 35% affirmative action, accusing past government of acting in breach of international treaties on women's participation in government. The justice added that the national gender policy is not merely a policy statement, but one that must be backed with, with requisite action on the part of the government. He said the 35% uh, affirmative action which entails appointed position for women to ensure inclusivity must not be merely on paper as Nigeria is signatory to the international treaty, particularly to those entrenching the rights of women. And joining us this morning is Fumi Ayola. It's good to have you join us. Good morning. All right, so let's get to the crux of this. We understand that, I mean, the 35% affirmative action is something that's been put out prior to this time. And we haven't been very great with implementation. Now you have the court ordering the government to obey you know, the 35% affirmative action. What difference does this make? I mean, does it change anything? We seem to have a big and a huge challenge with obeying laws and implementing policies. I mean, we, Nigeria is a member of the UN. We have ratified all these bills have been ratified by the UN. Nigeria is, we have a, a, a gender policy, a national gender policy that already has all these things all these bills and all these policies already in place, and then we have to go to court to enforce it. I'm really wondering if the government is, um, the world uses are they serious about all these policies? You know, so we, we have the policies in place, there's no reason for us to go to court to enforce it. So there's no guarantee that the government will even listen to the court. So their own policies, they are not even attending to. But trying to make sense out of all of this, uh, we have been part of these treaties for you know a long time, and uh, we uh, you know uh, celebrate the International Women's Day every March the eighth. Uh, this year was, was a bit uh, extreme because uh, in the wake of all of that, that's when um, the House of uh, the National Assembly rejected those um, gender-based uh, bills, and women had to take to the street in protest, you know, to bring um, the government, uh, you know to do the right thing. But my question right now is that, why is it that uh, this law, or this issue rather, that has been on for a while, doesn't seem to want to see uh, the end be? Is it a thing that the men or whoever don't want women you know, to be placed side by side with them? Or what are the general issues, really? Honestly, don't think this is a men issue. I think it's more of a women issue. Look okay. at what we're protesting against. We're protesting for these three bills, 35% affirmative action, all this we're protesting for. What we should be protesting for, really, is for the treaties and the policies, for them to be acknowledged. You know, that's what we should be protesting for. We're, we're protesting for the wrong things. And if you ask me, um, the women, women have gone to a point where we're not supporting ourselves. It's women, we're supporting women. Look at the elections. We have 47% women voters, but then of the voters in Nigeria are women. And we only have nine members in the House of Senate. They, they said that despite it, there's something wrong. We're not taking advantage of the power that we have. We're, we're too busy um, being against each other instead of supporting each other. Women have to get to a point where they're supporting each other for them to get value. That's, that's what I think personally. Okay, so but um, don't you think that this might ne not necessarily be uh, the fact that women might be fighting against women, but the fact that it might just be a cultural thing? Now, over time, we understand how culture and religion has played very great. I mean, you have some religion saying women are not supposed to speak in gatherings, and then you have, you know, some culture that does not even allow women, they're not supposed to be seen you know, and they're not supposed to be out there. Uh, so don't you think that w we have to take, it's a battle that has to be 
well, I'm calling it a battle. It's something that has to be, you know, uh, resolved by um, looking at the cultural bias and uh, the religious differences that we have. And maybe we don't have to have a court order because like you have rightly mentioned, why do we need to have a court order asking the government to obey this? It just means that we don't even believe in it. My question, first question is, who are the custodians of culture? Women basically are the custodians of culture. They're the ones who pass culture down from generation to generation. So the major problem here is still the women. The culture says a, 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 a man should not, should not cook, should not do house chores. And we pass it down from generation to generation to generation. I was talking to a seven-year-old boy recently on International Women's Day. I said to him, when you get home, go into the kitchen for mommy. He says, of course not. I'm going to enter the house and sit, sit in the sitting room and put my leg up. And I'm like, who told you that? He said, daddy. So here we are. It's a cultural the custodians of culture are the women. We are the ones who we need to begin to understand that culture doesn't favor us, it hasn't favored us, and begin to train. It might be tough to change this generation, but begin to train the next generation on what is right and what isn't. We are the ones requesting ourselves. We, we're looking for validation, always looking for validation from the men. I, I don't understand that. No, but I mean, can you blame the people? Can you blame the women who have constantly looked for validation? Because this is a culture that has been very predominant over time. And so uh, what you are probably proposing is a counterculture. And it might really take a lot of time because it has become a norm. It has become a behavior, like you have mentioned. A lot of people just, I mean, you have the fact that several gender don't think in this direction. So um, I don't know how effective, that's my question. How effective would be, uh, will this be for us it's the question because if we're unable you know to uh, re have uh, I mean if we're able to set the mindset or have a reorientation uh, with the entire community how then do we come to a point of acceptance and where people begin to believe this and begin to change differently without having a court order so basically my question is how effective do you think the court order will be for us honestly I am I'm very doubtful that court order will, will add any <laughs> any major changes. I don't think that the court order will make any major changes. Um, who, it's the women that will make the change. We're protesting, yes. It's the women. I'll give you an example. Look at Rwanda. 60% of the political class in Rwanda are women. And that was necessary because of the genocide that killed, you know, they killed most of the men. But look at Rwanda today. With a 60% women in politics, they are practically the, the most outstanding nation in Africa they are doing. Everybody's going to Rwanda to go and learn how they got from A to Z so fast. And it's one of their, one of the reasons is because they had women in their house, in their, in their politics, 60%, they have 60% women. So the truth of the matter is that we, we, we need to understand the importance of women in political positions, in ministerial positions, in even religious position, we need to understand the importance of women. We, we, we have used culture and religion to cower women too much. And we women need to understand our importance. And until we begin to understand our importance, we're not going to go too far. All right, uh, before we let you go now, uh, Mrs. Um, Ayula, let's get the final you know, talk on this particular discourse now. Would the court haven't um, affirmed, uh, haven't affirmed that this 35% affirmative action? Uh, uh, and, uh, uh, so what is next for the women, in as much as you don't believe that um, it might be implemented now? So what are we looking at seeing uh, the next uh, couple of uh, weeks, months um, after this? What's your next move? Okay, so my, my prayer is that this protest has generated a lot of, um, I'm looking for the right word to use, a, 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 a lot of um, attention from the women. Women finally realize that there's something wrong here, you know, and we begin to build that camaraderie, that unity. You know, I'm hopeful that over the years that the that unity we will be able to build on it, and we will build on it, you know, and begin to push ourselves out and support ourselves even more, so that. We, we can, I'm looking for the right, forgive me, 
so, so that we can we can begin to realize that we have more power than we think we have and begin to make use of, of the power that we have. That's my hope, you know, falling as a, as a falling out from, from the court action. All right, thank you so much. Uh, indeed, we have been speaking uh, with Mrs. Fumi Ayola. She is a politician, a business analyst, and the whole lot um, fed that she has on her cap. Uh, we thank you so much for sharing your thoughts on this issue with us this morning. Thank you very much. It's nice being with you. All right. And that's the size of um, the show for this uh, Monday morning. We must say a very big thank you to all of you who have sat back to watch. Uh, we return again 7 a.m. tomorrow. My name is Justin Akadone. And I am Mercy Boko. If you missed out on any part of the conversation, it's all right to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And do subscribe to YouTube channel. It's at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. Many thanks for watching.